Before we start talking about all of the great things about Kotlin and how it integrates with Android and Android development, I wanted to talk about the history of programming languages on Android. Um, so we actually haven't introduced that many programming languages. The Android SDK was released in 2008, and with that, we had support for coding apps in the Java programming language. The very next year, in 2009, we added the Android Native Development Kit, our NDK, and that added C++ support. And then it was a full eight years before we added support for our third language, Kotlin. Um, and so what does it mean to add a new language on Android? We added support uh, for Kotlin as a first class language in 2017. And uh, basically what that meant was adding support in the form of guides and docs and uh, Android Studio actually bundling the Kotlin plugin. Then in 2018, we announced Android KTX, which brought idiomatic Kotlin to uh, the Android platform and all of the Jetpack libraries. In 2019, we announced that we're going Kotlin first, making Kotlin our default language on Android. And today, I think this is the first time we've publicly said this, um, over 70% of the top 1,000 apps on the Google Play Store now use Kotlin. So really rapid growth in the Android ecosystem. So you've all been going through the code labs and working on projects in the last few weeks. And I wanted to quickly review what are some of our favorite features in the Kotlin language, and then actually ask you what yours are. So the first one is uh, nullability being baked into the type system. So that question mark operator there on bundle basically means that saved instance state in this code example, in this main activity, uh, could be nullable. Um, and what that means is that you actually have to check to see if it's null or not. Why that's valuable is it actually helps you prevent null pointer exceptions in your code, as I, I think many of you know, especially those of you who completed the, the bootcamp course. Um, and null pointer exceptions are one of the top exceptions that we see in apps in the wild. So it's really nice that Kotlin helps you get rid of them. Next, there's first class support for lambdas. And it actually, in Kotlin, there's this nice syntax where if your lambda is your only parameter for a function, you can actually omit the parentheses in the function call and just open the parameter with uh, braces, as you see here. Third is you can use template expressions and strings to avoid string concatenation, which can look a little messy in your code. And then fourth and finally, this is a minor thing, but you don't have to use semicolons, which looks really nice when you can kind of get rid of them. So those are specific features, but broadly, what do we really like about Kotlin? Um, so the first is this idea of expressiveness or concision. You can basically say more with less code. Second is safety, which gets back to that nullability point, kind of that being baked into the type system. Third is that Kotlin is fully interoperable with the Java programming language. So you can introduce just one file or one class, your Java APIs from Kotlin seamlessly and vice versa, which means that it's really easy to just start using Kotlin and on Android, you don't have to migrate all of your code over. And fourth and finally is this idea of structured concurrency. So Kotlin has a really nice primitive called coroutines that helps you handle asynchronous work. And uh, coroutines has really good integration with the Android app lifecycle to make it easy for you to deal with exception, cancellation, and make sure that you're not leaking memory when you kick off an asynchronous task in your app. Next, I want to talk about uh, Kotlin and Jetpack. So um, what is Jetpack? Uh, Jetpack is a suite of libraries, along with tools and guidance, um, that actually come unbundled from the Android operating system. And it helps make complicated tasks easier. Um, and it helps you kind of write code that targets both very old versions of Android and new versions of Android all at the same time. Um, and so when you import these libraries into your app, you'll be able to tell what they are because they're all under the package name uh, Android X, which is why you kind of see that stylized in code here. So a Android X or Jetpack is really prominent in the Android community. It's actually pretty new, this set of uh, libraries that kind of support you in app development, but they've already been adopted by all of the apps on this page, many of which you probably recognize. And we actually looked at data from the Play Store and from the top 10,000 apps I install on the Play Store, 84% of them are using one or more Jetpack libraries. So 
really wide, wide usage that um, we're seeing. And you've probably actually, if you've gone through the Android code lab so far, you've probably used some of them yourself. So as we started looking at these libraries, we realized that they were written originally in the Java programming language. Um, but we introduced support for Kotlin in 2017, and we really wanted to make them easier to use from Kotlin. And this is something we heard over and over again from developers. I started using Kotlin, but my Java programming language APIs, like Jetpack, don't feel as expressive. So I want to explain an example of how we address this and then show you kind of how this is trickled down through the entire sort of Android API ecosystem. So this is an example of a Java API. It's the shared preferences class. Um, so this is a class that helps you store user preferences in key value pairs. So first you retrieve an editor that helps you actually add uh, preferences. And then in this example, we're adding um, two Booleans. And so the editor has these methods, put Boolean, put string, put long, et cetera, that let you save user preferences. Um, and then because each of those put uh, methods returns an editor, you can chain them together. And then you call apply at the very end to save those preferences. And this works fine, um, but there's one potential issue, which is that it's not a very idiomatic way to do this in Kotlin. So let me show you what we've added in Kotlin. Um, so Kotlin provides this nice syntax where if your function's only parameter is a lambda, you don't need parentheses and you can just use braces to enclose the lambda. So this code makes use of an extension function in Kotlin on that shared preferences class where you can now pass a lambda to the edit method. And that lambda makes these two put Boolean calls. And then the extension function takes care of calling apply for you too. Um, and it leads this really nice declarative looking style where instead of chaining together a bunch of put calls and then calling apply, you're almost visually opening up an editor in code, making the edits that you want and then closing it with an end brace. And so if you kind of look at the code, it better visually represents what you're trying to do with that shared preferences object. So this is just the code that makes that possible. It's the definition of that extension function on shared preferences. Um, the core KTX library, uh, which is the library that you pull in to do this, has an extension function on shared preferences that overrides edit. And the extension function takes a lambda with your edit action, so those put booleans. And what the function does is it creates an editor calls the action lambda, passing in the editor, and then it calls apply for you. And so all that's to say is that we're, Kotlin provides the flexibility to create more concise, more expressive and declarative code. And we've done some work to kind of make that possible for you using Android KTX. So in order to pull in this initial set of KTX or core KTX, um, all you have to do is you just add this one line dependency in your project and it adds all this nice Kotlin sugar on top of the existing libraries in the Android platform. But um, there are KTX extensions, not just for kind of the core Android platform, but also almost all of the Jetpack libraries that you probably have used, especially if you've gone through the Android code labs. And to add them to your project, you just add the KTX dependency for that library. And we, so we talked about type safe builders. That was the pattern I just showed you. And um, there's actually a number of other patterns that are provided by KTX. Uh, so extension functions are one. There are these things called operator overloads in Kotlin, property delegates. And then the last one, which we alluded to at the beginning, is coroutines. Um, I'll get into that in a second, but I will say, uh, if you go to this link that's displayed here, developer.android.com slash Kotlin slash KTX, it has a full list of these Kotlin extensions and uh, some guides for how to start integrating them into your app to make sure it's really idiomatically Kotlin. So let's talk about coroutines. Um, coroutines are basically a really lightweight way to manage current currency. And we've added support for them in many of the Android Jetpack libraries. Um, so if you've gone through the, the code labs, you're probably familiar with ViewModel, and there is a ViewModel coroutine scope that we provide there. Uh, there's also integration with Lifecycle, Room, Work Manager, Live Data, and there are more of these libraries coming. Um, we've really invested a lot in coroutines because we think they're a pretty powerful construct. Let me just show you an example of what this looks like in ViewModel. So here we're looking at a ViewModel, and as you may know, 
um, all coroutines need to execute in a scope. So here inside the context of the view model, you can use view model scope. And the view model scope is what launches any of the asynchronous work you want to do in your app. Um, and then when view model is cleared, your view model scope automatically gets cleaned up and any coroutine gets canceled. And that basically ensures that you're not leaking memory. And so what we've done here is we've actually tied coroutines, which are a Kotlin concept, to the Android lifecycle, which is very sort of firmly an Android concept, and made it a lot easier to use these Kotlin uh, idioms with your app in that way. You might be wondering, how do I access all of this Kotlin goodness? And fortunately, it's pretty easy. Um, if you just go to any of the documentation, so this is just an example, the androidx.core.content package, make sure you're on the Kotlin tab. It will show you the Kotlin support that's kind of built in for that documentation, and it will include the Kotlin extensions as well for that library so that you know that you're getting access to all of the sort of latest and greatest Kotlin versions of these libraries. Great. So the very last thing I wanted to cover is Kotlin and Android Studio. As many of you know, Android Studio is the official IDE for Android app development. And Kotlin comes bundled with Android Studio, and we've added a lot in it to it to make Kotlin development really great. So there are lint checks, for example, in Android Studio to make your Kotlin code more idiomatic. Uh, there's also Kotlin-specific refactorings, Kotlin templates, and we've even been going through the Android uh, SDK and annotating Java message, me uh, methods and properties with special annotations that tell the Kotlin compiler if they're nullable or not. So even if you are calling a Java method from Kotlin, you can use that nullability that helps you avoid null pointer exceptions and crashes in your app. Uh, there's also tools inside of Android Studio to ensure your Java code is interoperable with Kotlin. So to find a list of these, you can check out the inspection preferences in Android Studio. And then my personal favorite feature is uh, Kotlin will actually do a best effort conversion for you of your Java code. It's a really good way to learn Kotlin if you're newer to the language. Um, and what you basically do is you copy some Java programming language code, paste it into your Kotlin file, and then Android Studio will convert it for you. And so you can really see what your typical Java constructs are in Kotlin.